Hey guys, Zane here with another One Take Review, and today I wanted to talk about the new Megan Thee Stallion album, Traumazine. Traumazine is the latest full-length studio album from rapper, singer, musician, Megan Thee Stallion. After a several-year-long period of seemingly being on top of the world, or at the very least on top of the music industry with a number of hit singles, mixtapes, even a hit debut album, which was questionable in quality, but still popular nonetheless, it seems like Megan's hype has kind of been slowing down a little bit, and her latest record has definitely lost a lot of the traction that some of her previous releases have had, but listening to Traumazine, it's kind of not hard to see why. In fact, despite the fact that her first full-length album, Good News, was undeniably a disappointing record, Tramzi might be her weakest effort yet. Now let me just start right off the bat by saying there is some credit that should be given to Traumazine for a small handful of things. This isn't a total disaster of an album. It's honestly not even that bad of an album. It probably won't be making my worst albums of the year list or anything like that at the end of the year. There are some good aspects about Traumazine. For example, the record actually starts off in a promising manner with the tracks NDA and Not Nice in particular, really demonstrating a sort of Memphis-based gritty sound that really does suit Megan nicely. Her flow has only been partially attached to this overall sonic aesthetic in the past, so these tracks especially really just do add a bit of flavor to her discography in the grand scheme of things. Mind you, these cuts are still pretty unoriginal in the overall atmosphere of their particular subgenres, so take that for what you will, but still, it's nice to hear Megan take up a harder and overall tougher sound with very little compromise, and overall, I think it's something that she should really start moving towards in the future. It's just a shame that this sound is found in such limited quantity on Traumazine, because the rest of this record eventually just goes off into the realm of forgettability. Some of Megan's most tender moments are surprisingly here as well, though I suppose it makes sense considering all of the drama that I am uh, not professional enough to fully explain in this video that this record is heavily structured around, and songs, especially on the second half of Traumazine, like Anxiety, feel incredibly personal, especially by Megan's otherwise not personal standards. Seeing as the persona that she displays to the public is based around hyperconfidence and hypersexualization through her music, she rarely does uh, tap in to her more personal side, so it is kind of nice to see that, and these songs aren't great. I'm not going to say that Anxiety is one of the best tracks I've heard this year so far. It's not. In fact, it's not even all that good overall, if I'm being totally honest. But the important thing is that they obviously demonstrate a form of artistic evolution for Megan, and I hope that she can really hone in on one of these two different aspects that are slightly demonstrated on Traumazine, but never fully blossoming. Now we get into the actual issues, however, because Megan's actual performance is unfortunately quite dull, shockingly. If there's anything I was ever expecting to complain about on a Megan Thee Stallion album, it was never going to be her performance work, but... Here we are, I mean, this is just not impressive at all. Although the character that she normally portrays is always very engaging due to her naturally boisterous nature, she feels remarkably subdued on Traumazine, and again, I understand that in a sense because this record is structured around a lot of serious personal events and issues, so in that way it does kind of make sense, but it doesn't excuse the fact that it feels like Megan feels horribly distanced from the listener. It feels less like you're listening to a close friend just sort of pour their heart out to you, but more like a acquaintance that you might have known for like a week, awkwardly telling a story that has made both of you sort of uncomfortable. It just isn't effective at all in truly being personal and listener to artists. But still, this is fairly appropriate for the aforementioned songs, the songs that are meant to be more heartfelt overall. It makes sense, it just isn't executed as well as it could be. On the other end of the spectrum, you've got pretty typical Megan tracks that are about as far from heartfelt as you could possibly imagine, like Miss Nasty and Gift and a Curse, that really just need more energy to actually have any impact on the listener, but it really just feels like Megan is going through the motions as she rarely feels like she cares about what she's actually presenting in the more upbeat numbers here. 
This, in turn, makes the listener care even less about what Traumazine is trying to get across, and it certainly doesn't help that there are some pretty god-awful features from people like Pooh Shiesty and Future that just already drag down completely unremarkable tracks, and don't even get me started on Dua Lipa on Sweetest Pie, a track that could have been absolutely fantastic because it's someone as powerfully artistic as Megan and someone as musically talented naturally as Dua Lipa coming together it should be a sort of massive force a massive explosion between two mega talents in the music industry right now that kind of results in something that's so lackluster and corny and unremarkable that it's actually one of the most disappointing songs I've heard in the past few years but I digress my point is the features not good but the biggest issue here isn't Megan herself, nor is it the actual bad features that I just mentioned. It's just the fact that Traumazine is terribly predictable. It sounds like a minor issue, but really it's as simple as that. The majority of this record doesn't work because you can already tell what it's going to do before it actually does it. From sonic qualities and instrumentals to lyricism and song progressions, anyone even remotely familiar with any of Megan's back catalog will already kind of be familiar with what is being presented on Traumazine, and it's a shame because this seems like the kind of album that would be perfect for any artist, but especially an artist like Megan who is already still in a very, very early stage of her career to evolve, but she just doesn't. Much of the record goes between sounding like a less impactful version of her sound on mixtapes like Fever, and more of the continuation of her bland and completely unremarkable style on Good News in 2020, which was one of the most disappointing first full-length albums of that year. There really isn't much to say about the actual musical qualities of Traumazine, as it really does just kind of feel like a washed-up, sun-dried version of what made Megan such an engaging and striking performer only a few years prior to this album's release. So, overall, Traumazine isn't utterly horrible, it's just horribly predictable, if anything, and it does feel like Megan's most half-hearted attempt at throwing together a project thus far. I'm going to give this album two and a half stars out of five. My one take on this record is that while it may not be the most damaging thing in the world career-wise, Megan's reputation is bound to drop at least a little bit after releasing something as genuinely unwarranted as Traumazine. So again, two and a half stars out of five, and with that being said, that's the end of this review. Now, see you guys in the next one.